Hey everybody, this is Catherine from Dryer Days Art Studio. Thanks for being with me. This video is going to be about the eight tools that you need for a successful pour, plus a bonus tip from me. Let's get started. Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Catherine from Dryer Days Art Studio. Thanks for being with me today. This video, like I said before, is the eight tools that you're gonna need for a successful pour, plus an extra tip from me. So, these are the eight things that I would not be able to get through a pour without. They are crucial, they are essential, and if you don't have them, your pour is probably not gonna come out as great as it could be. So let's start with at the beginning with the most obvious. You need your canvas. This is a beginner video, this is a beginner series that I'm gonna do, so there are other surfaces that you can do these paintings on, but for now we're just gonna focus on canvas. As you can see, I've got a couple very little ones here. You can get these in bulk packs, um, for really inexpensive at Michael's. You can also find them at Walmart. Target has a few and also Amazon. I highly encourage you get bulk packs because there's gonna be a lot of trial and error with these paintings. You're gonna have to feel the things out, how the paints pour, how you work with the paints. And so you're gonna go through a lot of canvas in the beginning. So I highly recommend getting the value packs. Um, next, you'll see that I have my canvases on this uh, crate here, this rack. Now, uh, this is because you want to keep your, your canvas elevated when you're pouring. So when your colors pour out, they're going to drip over the sides, they're going to drip down, and you just want to have it elevated so that your paint isn't sticking to whatever surface you're painting on. Like if we didn't have this rack and we just poured right on this table, the canvas would stick to the surface, and we don't want that. So rack, there are other things you can use. I've seen people put push pins in the canvas and then set them on the push pins. I have tried that. I don't, I'm not a fan of that technique. These racks are very stable and very level. And so I just kind of prefer that. When I will get into more um, resin paintings and things like that, where I will use other things to set my canvas or my platform higher, and you'll see that there. But I prefer these racks for now. I got this at Bed Bath & Beyond. I got three of them, very cheap again. I had 20% off coupon, they were on sale. So again, you can find this stuff very inexpensive. Number three is you're going to need some little cups to put your paint in and flip it over and let all your paint out. These little guys I just got recently on Amazon. I got a pack of 200, I want to say for maybe four bucks, not even. I can put the link in the description below uh, to Amazon where I got these. I was using much bigger cups and it was just really messy. I wasn't getting the paint distributed how I liked and found these little guys and they've just sort of changed my life. So. Definitely recommend the smaller cups for the beginner, especially if you're using small canvas, you don't need huge cups. Four, you are gonna need stir sticks. Again, I invested in these little ones. I had bigger tongue depressor, uh, lollipop, or um, I'm sorry, like fudgesicle type big sticks. Let me see if I have any here. Yeah, like much bigger. I was using these with the bigger cups. With the smaller cups, you need a smaller stick. Much more conducive, again, Michaels, Target, Walmart, Amazon. You can find these just about anywhere, very cheap. Okay, number five, I think. One, two, three, four, five, okay. Okay, number five. Now these little containers, I'm just using this as an example. I do a lot of tie dyeing, and so I had a lot of these um, bottles kind of laying around. And it's not so much the bottles that I'm saying that you need, but what goes inside them, which this one contains water. I use spring water, 100% spring water, when I mix in my pouring medium, when I mix into my paints. I do not use tap water. I do not use other bottled water. And I'm talking, you know, I go and buy like uh, pull, uh, the 100% natural that's in the bottle. I don't go to like the spring and boil it or anything, but I make sure that it is spring water. If I can't find spring water, I try to find pH balanced water. I just find it works better and I drink spring water. <laughs> so I just kind of stuck with that. Um, these little bottles though, they do come in handy because I put my water in one and I put my silicone in the other, which we'll get to our silicone here in a second. Number six is you need your pouring medium. Now here is well where I will plug another artist here on YouTube who is very talented, does great videos on pouring. Uh, she has kind of an abstract series going now, which is awesome as well. Her name is Lily's Mix. That's her channel name, Lily's Mix, here on YouTube. And I got this recipe from her for pouring medium and altered it a little bit for me. Um, what I do is I take an Elmer's glue all bottle like this 
I kind of measure right between half and three fourths and I'll empty that of the glue all out into another container. The rest I will mix with spring water, shake it up. Sometimes I'll add a little Mod Podge in there. I'll add a little more water if it needs or a little more glue wall back if it needs and I have a beautiful, beautiful pouring medium. And you need a pouring medium to put in all of your paints before you pour it. Again, Elmer's glue wall. Not school glue or other glue, but glue wall. You can also use Mod Podge as I mentioned. I have used this matte one before and I bought a few different ones to actually experiment with in later videos. I'm very excited about that. And you know, experimentation is what makes this so fun. I highly encourage that. And again, if you're getting, you know, relatively inexpensive canvas and you can experiment and play around, I really encourage that. I'm making these videos to kind of show what has worked for me because I had to go through a lot of trial and error and I'm hoping to cut that out for a lot of my viewers. All right, so next, this is number seven. Crucially important if you want really big, beautiful cells. And you can actually get cells with certain paints and the way you mix them and if they're opaque, translucent, etc. But I kind of just go straight for the source here with the silicone to get those nice big cells. This, as you can see, is automotive silicone lubricant and I got this at Lowe's Hardware. Take the cap off here. It comes with this red skinny tube that goes right in the nozzle here and you spray it. Now, I take mine, and again, I kind of got this tip from Lily's Mix, and I spray it into an open container, and I'll spray a bunch in outside. I'll let the fumes come out. I'll let the bubbles go down, and then I will seal it off and cap it, and now I've got my silicone in this easy drip bottle. It's wonderful. Now, I have seen other artists spray directly into their paint colors with this, you can do that. I have done that before, I don't prefer it. I prefer to drip my silicone into my paintings and not shoot this directly in. There are other forms of silicone and I have tried a lot of them. This one is a treadmill belt lubricant that I got on Amazon for about 12 or $13, I wanna say. It's 100% silicone. 12 or 13 bucks might seem like a lot for this tiny little bottle, but let me tell you, I've only used to about the top of this wrapper here because you only need very, very few drops in your paints. So I've got this over a year ago, and this was pretty much all I was using before I picked up this other silicone lubricant a few months ago, and I've hardly used any. So it's definitely been worth the money. Um, you'll get tons of cells with this. I find I get more and maybe bigger cells with the automotive lubricant, but they're both great products. Other things that I have tried were WD-40, um, I have also tried KY lubricant, I have tried silicone-based hair products. None of those got the results that I have gotten with the treadmill lubricant and with the car uh, silicone lubricant. Highly recommend those. Number eight, last but not least, my little guy right here, my torch. I also just got this on Amazon. I had been using a huge like propane torch that we used to like start our bonfires. The thing was way too big. It was not conducive to this environment. So I finally bit the bu bullet, looked them up on Amazon, and this thing was only like 15 bucks and it's awesome. You just have to fill it with some butane and it does the trick beautifully. Um, I will put the link again to this one in the description. Uh, but when you use that, you can get cells um, in your paintings without the torch, even if you're using silicone. The silicone will just kind of break the paint away and you'll see the cells start coming up. The minute you add the heat, the painting just explodes. It, it just comes alive. It's not the same with a heat gun. It's not the same with a hair dryer. Um, it, it has to be a blowtorch. So these are the eight items that you need. Canvas, a rack, your cups, your stir sticks, your water and containers to put the water in, your pouring medium, your silicone, and your torch. Now, I'm going to get my camera down, so bear with me for a second to share with you the bonus tip. But if you can see here, I have this set up with this cardboard box with all my stuff in it. And I call this my pour table. I love this thing so, 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 so much. I made this out of a cardboard box that we had gotten a TV in. Let me take my mount off here. And what I did was I taped the sides up so they're nice and sturdy. And then we had some plastic laying around because we had painted some rooms. So this is just the plastic you would buy if you were gonna paint a room and you wanted to cover your carpet. 
I lined the entire thing with plastic, made it nice and taut, and I stapled it, as you can see. And then for videoing purposes, I just laid this brown um, paper in here to have a nice backdrop for my paintings. But as you can see, this pour table, it's just awesome. You, when I first started, I was pouring over plastic in my garage and it was so messy. It was getting everywhere. And so I highly recommend that you find something, especially if you're really passionate about pouring and you know you're gonna be doing a lot of them. Um, you can also use the lid of like the big tote bins. I've seen people pour over those, anything that's gonna collect the paint because you're gonna have a lot of paint runoff and it's gonna get kind of messy. And here's a little picture here of my latest painting that I did a time lapse of that I'm gonna post. But I really hope this video was informative. I hope this gave you some insights and maybe some tools that you hadn't picked up yet or answered some questions if you were having problems with your silicone or anything else. Please comment any questions that you have for me and I would be happy to answer them the best that I can. And let me know other videos that you wanna see. I will have how-to videos coming up shortly with actual paintings. Thank you guys so much again and please just love.